Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem, which is part of the code daily challenge. Minimum absolute difference in BST. So what this problem says is to get a root of a binary search tree. And we want to return the minimum possible, uh, the minimum absolute difference between the values of any two different nodes. So just the minimum difference between any two different nodes. Um, so for a BST, one property is that the left child is always smaller than the parent. And the right child is always big, bigger, okay? And so if you go basically from left to the root to the right, that's the you will get the the tree the list of elements in a sorted order, okay? Um, so this is what the problem asks us to do now. How do we how do we tackle it? How do we just get the minimum absolute difference between any two values? Um, okay, so how do we get the minimum absolute difference between the values of any two different nodes? Well, the easiest solution is first is to just get the list of elements in the tree in sorted order. So, for example, what for this tree, it would be um, first getting 1, 2, 3, and then 4, 6. And basically, we, for a BST to get the, the elements in a sorted order, you just need to do in order traversal. And what in order traversal is, is just taking the left side first, then the root node, Let's call it node, and then the right side, okay? That's what in order traversal is. And with BST, in order traversal gives you a sorted list. Because we know for a BST, the left side is always smaller. The node is smaller than the node, and then the right side is bigger than the node, so it's bigger than the left side. So that way you get sorted order. So for our list here in the first example, if we do it, we will get one, two, three, four. 6, right? And in this case, how do we get the minimum difference? Well, since it's in a sorted order, we only need to compare the adjacent elements. We don't need to compare like 6 and 1, for example, because that that difference would be bigger than if we just take 1 and 2, right? All adjacent elements are closer to each other, right? 2 is always closer to 1 here than 3. Basically, the element in this position next to it is always closer than the elements after that, because the list is sorted. And so it's we only need to compare adjacent elements. And so once we get the list, we can just go through the elements, adjacent ones, and compare just, let's say, i minus 1 with i. And start just from 1, go all the way to the end, and just compare each element compared with the previous one. That way, and, and, um, and by comparing it, I mean just taking the the difference and checking if that's the minimum difference so far or not. Um, so that's a straightforward solution. Let's just do it. For in order traversal, we will need to do it with DFS. You just go to the left side, uh, visit the node, and then go to the right side. And so to do that, we'll just do DFS. Um, and then we'll have DFS as well in order for a node, right? And for for in order, we will first need to visit node.left, then visit the node itself. So by visiting here, we will just add it to our list, because that's what we want at the end. Um, and so we want the left, whatever is the result from the left traversal, we want to append to it the result of the node, and then append to it the result of the right side. Okay, And each call will return a list. So here, if we don't have a node, which means basically we are at the end, we we'll just return an empty list so that this concatenation work works. And then at the end, we just return this. So basically, the result from the left traversal plus the current node value plus the right side. And each of these will return a list. Even if it's empty, it will return an empty list. And so we can add them up together. So now we can call the in order traversal with the root and get a list of numbers. Okay, let's call it, well, let's just call it list. And now we just need to keep track of the min distance. Let's initialize it first to a big value. So we start from one to the length of the list. And then we'll check just the difference for each element and the one before it. And we just take the min of that and what we have so far. So that would be taking the min with the minimum distance we have so far. We don't need self at this point, we just need this. And now we can just do min distance is equal to this. Okay, 
and then at the end we just return this min this and this. Okay. Okay, so now let's run this. Let's submit. And this passes, okay? Now um in terms of time complexity, this is going to be um DFS, so it's O um E plus V, the number of nodes and the number of edges. And we have at most um N so O of N here and N is up to 10 to the power of 4 so it should be fine we are also doing a loop here which is going to be O of N on the number of nodes um, that's in terms of time complexity in terms of space we are using this extra list so it's O of um, N space as well because the list can have at most N element now one improvement we can think about doing is what if can we get rid of this space instead of having all this list extra list here um, and we can, we can try to do this while the, are we doing our DFS here. How do we do that? Well, you can notice here for each element, all you need is the previous one. So let's just keep track of the previous one, right? So let's go here. Uh, we will no longer get a list, we'll just do it in place, but we will need to keep track of the mean distance as, um, as a property of the class. And we also need to keep track of the previous element. Um, and so we need to also keep track of the previous element so that we get the difference with it here. Um, so initially, it's not there is nothing, there is no previous node. And then we start our in order, and then at the end we want to return this. So how do we change this here? So we are no longer returning a list. So, um, so we no longer need to return a value here, right? We can just um, do this reversal. Um, now how do we process it? Well, for a node value, we just need to get the difference between it and the previous one, right? And then we want to get the min of that with the minimum distance so far. Okay, so we assign that to the min distance. We take the min and we assign it to the min distance. But we can do this only if this is the second element we traverse, because otherwise, if it's the first one, then this would be none. The previous would be none. And so we need to do to make sure that we have a previous element before doing that. And so that's what we do here. And then for each iteration, we want to set the previous value, which is the current node, so that on the next iteration, the next call to in order, we have this value set to the previous element. Okay, And that should be it. That should be only the only modification we need. Except we have a problem here. And this is because we have a zero. And zero will always evaluate to false, even though it's a, it's a real node value. And so... We just want to make sure that this evaluates to true if it's to zero. And so to do that, we want to just check it's not none, because that's what we care about. If it's not none, which means it was set before, then we want to proceed. And that we should handle the case where we have a zero here. So let's just do that. And so yeah, that should be it here. Now let's just submit. Um, and this passes, okay? And this solution doesn't use any extra list space, so it should be better. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. Please like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye